Hello mate and welcome to episode 3 of our Unity for Dum Dums video series. In the last video we created a script which we attached to our GDT game object which also has a sprite render which we also attached in the last video. So as promised in this video what we're going to do is we're going to work on that script with the intention of allowing us to move the player. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rename this script or rather remove and create a new one because player controller is technically what we're creating but with a view to making this game as modular as we can possibly make it I think it's actually be more intelligent for us to rename this script to what it actually does um, and that will make sense in a minute so I'm going to remove that component I'm going to remove that script and there we go unity is quite happy to just remove it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another script with what the game actually is going to utilize this script for and the reason we don't just rename the script is that the actual code contained within the script uses the file name as the name of the class that's being created so we could just go and change that in the editor as well but in order to keep this simple we're just going to do it the most simple way so we've deleted our script we're creating a new one we've right clicked on our script folder i'm actually going to create a new folder and i'm going to create this folder inputs or something like that that's just going to indicate that what the script within this folder is going to do is it going to take some form of input from the player and now we can create a new c sharp script and i'm actually going to call this w a s and d Usually, you want your class names to be as simple as possible, your script names as well. Um, but because we're only using this script for one thing and one thing only, all it's going to do is it's going to take in the W, A, S and D input from the player and convert that into movement of whatever game object the script is attached to. It doesn't matter what the script name is because we're not going to be referencing this script from anywhere else. And we're going to have to design our little game here to use other means of accessing the variables that enable us to not really matter. Okay, so now we've created our script. We're going to double click on it and it will bring up Visual Studio. Whatever your editor is, is going to be the thing that pops up. Now, before we get started with this, I need to explain something. For those of you who don't understand, and this is not something that a lot of people are familiar with, and that's vectors. Okay. Now, vectors are essentially just a coordinate system that give us a direction. So, for example, let's say we've got our graph like this. Okay, we're all familiar with this from school. And our graph is split into points on the X and the Y axis. Essentially, what we're saying is, is that if I want my player to move in this direction, I need to know the vector coordinates or the vector of how much X and how much Y is moving. And this actually includes a Z axis as well because it's a three dimensional vector, but we're just going to concentrate on the two dimensional vector for now with X and Y. So X is obviously along the bottom, a horizontal axis and Y is the vertical axis. So if I want my character to move in this direction, I'm going to have to get it to move or I'm going to have to give it a vector of how many spaces is that? Let's say approximately two on the X and approximately one and a half on the Y. So we've got our WASD vector movement class here. So we're going to grab our script here like so. And you'll notice that there are some automatically created properties. This is basically what Unity does. It creates every single time you create a new class, it will create a mono behavior script with your script name. As you can see, WASD vector movement is the name of the class. It has some libraries that is going to be referenced and it has a start and an update method. A method, as we discussed in a previous video, is just a chunk of code that is run at a specific point in time. Start is run whenever the game starts. Update is run whenever the game updates, i.e. every single frame. Now, this isn't exactly every single frame because your frame rate is going to change depending on many different factors within your game. But essentially that's what's happening here and what's happening here now. Note that these will not run if the game object is not enabled. So if we are back in Unity and we are we were to take our player character object, 
like this and we were to disable it, those scripts are not going to run because the game object is deactivated. So we're going to click on that to reactivate our game object to make sure that these scripts are going to run. Awesome. So in order for us to make this code as modular as we possibly can, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create another class which I'm going to attach to this script, which is going to contain the movement vector for the character. So up here, we're going to create a, another folder within our scripts folder. And this one's going to be um, player, player properties or something along those lines. And then I'm going to create a new script within it. Movement vector. There we go. So now we have the ability to control this movement vector by adjusting things in this code. But this code is just going to do something really simple. It's just going to turn a vector into um, actual movement. So we can double click on that and it will open up our script just as it did before. Okay, so the first thing we need here is we need to create a property for the movement speed because we want to be able to change the movement speed. Public float. And what is a float? I hear you cry. I'm very glad you asked. Okay, so a float is what is known as a floating point number. So you've probably heard the term integer before. An integer is a whole number, i.e. one, two, three, four. It doesn't have a decimal point or anything after the decimal point. A floating point number does. That is 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. It is a number that has a decimal place in it. So I'm just going to call this move speed. I'm going to spell move speed correctly. And all that's going to do is going to be able to allow us to control this movement speed from the Unity editor rather than having to come in and edit the code every time. Remember that we're trying to make our game as friendly for game designers as possible. So we need some other variables. Now public, what public means is that we can see it in the Unity editor, but we can also access this property from other scripts elsewhere in the game. You might be thinking, well, why not just make all of our variables public? We don't always want to do that because realistically, there are certain things that don't need to be seen by the rest of the game and by allowing them to be seen we're opening up the door to sort of errors and memory use that we don't need to do so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to set up some private variables the velocity vector is going to be a vector three vector three is a three-dimensional vector it takes an x and a y and a z coordinate whatever object we have this attached to we need to access its rigid body so we need to rigid body and it's going to be rigid body 2d because we're working in a two-dimensional environment like so and that's all we need to access now so we've got we've given it a movement speed we've got the velocity vector which is the vector that our object is actually going to move onto and then we've got the rigid body 2d of the object which we're going to access or we're going to give the property in order to create the movement. Right, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to remove the start function because we don't need that. Start typing awake and then you'll see that the Visual Studio Code is already throwing you. You want to create the awake method, which is what the purple box is for. So if I now hit tab, it will actually create an awake method for me so that I don't have to go through typing it all out, which is pretty useful. But as soon as this object becomes awake as soon as it's instantiated or created or whatever you want to whatever terminology you want to use the code within the awake function will be run and what we need to do with our awake function is actually tell this this script what rigid body 2d is we've told our script at the moment that we have a rigid body 2d but we haven't told it which one because there might be thousands and thousands of rigid body 2Ds within our game. So we need to actually specify which rigid body 2D this script is going to reference. All we have to do is say rigid body 2D equals get component rigid body 2D. And as you can see, Unity or Visual Studio knew exactly what I was going to type them because this is the kind of most commonly used form of doing things. So Rigid body 2D equals get component rigid body 2D. What get component does, let me jump back into the Unity editor, is it looks at our game object, the game object that our script is attached to, and it will look for that component on our 
game object. Now at the moment, our game object doesn't have a rigid body 2D. So let's actually give it one now. So add component, just like we did before. If we type in rigid, you can see rigid body 2D appears. We select that and then you can see that it's created that component. Now what we do need to do here is return off the gravity scale by changing it to zero. Because even though this is a two dimensional game, if we have gravity scale turned on, what will happen is our character will actually drop. It will fall off the screen and we'll lose it forever. Okay, so now we've got a rigid body 2D component. Our script here is saying that this rigid body 2D variable that we've declared up here corresponds to that rigid body because we've used get component. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to create a method that will tell this code what vector we actually want to use in order to feed that into our rigid body. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a public method. Public void is set velocity much like a public variable such as we have up here, public float move speed. A public method is one which can be activated from elsewhere. Public void means that it doesn't return a value, it just does something. So when I say set velocity from somewhere else, it will run this code and obviously hopefully set our velocity to be whatever we want it to be. So we're actually going to receive an input parameter which means that when we call this function from wherever we're calling it for, we also have to pass a property. And we want to receive a vector three, which is known as a local variable. And all we're gonna do in this method is we're gonna say this dot velocity vector is equal to vel vector. So we're saying we call set velocity we pass in a vector three into it when we call it. And now we're saying that whatever number we pass in here is now going to be applied to the velocity vector variable, this one, which is obviously associated to our game object. Then the last thing we need to do is we actually need to tell our game object to use that velocity vector to move. Fixed update is going to make sure that this the player always moves or this object always moves at a fixed rate, basically. And you'll notice that this script is entirely modular because all we're doing is we're creating a movement vector for a game object. At no point in this script do we actually reference a specific game object. It's just whatever this script is attached to. So we're going to say rigid body 2D and we're actually going to now access the rigid body 2D properties themselves. Um, so we're going to access its velocity property and then we're going to set it to be the same as the velocity vector. This rigid body 2D has a velocity value attached to it. This is the physical properties of our game object. In order for us to move this game object, there are other ways we can do it, of course. But what we're choosing to do is we're going to give it velocity in whatever direction and we're using a vector to do that. So the velocity vector, if for example, our velocity vector was x1, y1, z0, it would move up and right in that direction at a 45 degree angle. If we were to move a velocity vector of 0, 0, 1, it would move towards the camera or away from the camera, depending on which axis your z direction is moving in. This script has a velocity vector value but until we tell the game to apply that velocity vector to our rigid body 2D's velocity, it won't do anything. What we're doing with our fixed update is every fixed update, we're telling Unity the velocity of our game object, rigid body 2D, is whatever this property is. So now all we need to do is from within our other script, call this method to set our velocity vector to be whatever we want it to be. So that is basically done. We can now come back to our Unity editor and we can actually apply the movement vector property or component to our game object. And you can see now that we've done that, the public property, which if you remember, and you can see move speed is the only value that we've got public, private vector three and private rigid body are not visible in the editor 
or in the inspector, but move speed is. So we can actually give this a movement speed of, let's just say 25 for the sake of argument. Okay, and then that will basically remain there at a value of 25 and it'll use that value for whatever it is that we want to do. Now, I'm glad I brought that up because what we haven't done is we haven't applied our movement speeds to this. At the moment, if we apply our velocity vector, our velocity vector is going to be like 1, 0 0.5, 0. That is not very fast movement. So what we actually need to do is multiply our vector 3 by our move speed value, which will actually turn it into some meaningful movement. When we multiply a vector by a single number, what happens is that every value within our vector 3 will be multiplied by move speed. So if our vector 3 was 1, 1, 1, and we multiplied it by our movement speed of 25, that vector would then become 25, 25, 25. Remember to save your scripts when you finish editing them so that they will actually be applied. And then once you've saved the script, Unity will recompile and it will take that information. Cool. So now we want to go into our move our actual WSD controls so that we can do something with them. And I'm actually going to remove the starts because we don't need it and get rid of this commented out section. The commented out sections don't do anything. They just give you, they allow you to annotate your code basically, but we, we're not stupid. We know what we're doing. Okay. So now I need to take in my WASD movement keys and actually do something meaningful with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of floating point numbers. They're going to be private, but the cool thing about Unity is if you don't specify whether it's public or private, it will just automatically instantiate or create them as private. When you're actually giving a floating point number a value inside code, you need to put F at the end of it to specify that it is a floating point. And you'll notice that that just created that line for me. All I had to do was hit the tab. So using words like movement X, kind of tells Unity and Visual Studio that you're referencing a property that's probably going to have an X and a Y value. And if I hit enter again, you know, it's not going to do it. But sometimes it will even say, do you want movement set as well, which we don't at the moment. Vector three. And as you can see, it will auto correct. If you want to accept the changes that the auto correct is suggesting, or as you can see here, it is suggesting some kind of um, code following on. If you want it to use the code that it's suggesting, you just hit tab. I don't because I want to call my vector three something else, but so movement vector is going to be, now we need to create a new vector rather than just editing an old one. That's all by means basically means just create a new variable. And as you can see, it's already suggesting the subsequent code and that's exactly what I want it to do so I'm going to say that and that but what I want to do is I want to normalize we are indeed going to reference our movement vector script from within our WASD movement script here so I'm going to use get component again but I'm going to use it slightly differently this time so I'm going to say get component and we're going to reference our movement vector and you can see this is all auto suggesting unity is pretty dang clever and then we're going to call the method that we created set velocity and we're going to input our movement vector on the game object that this script is attached to use get component we want to find our movement vector script this one and we want to call the method set velocity and we're going to feed it the property of the movement vector that we've created. So we're feeding in our vector three and what that is then going to do is that method is going to take the vector that we fed into it in this script and it's going to apply it to the velocity vector in this script. Then every single update, every single frame, it's going to take that value and apply it to our rigid body three 2D's velocity. That's all we're doing, okay? So at the moment, our velocity vector, our WASD movement keys is set to zero, zero because our movement X and our movement Y are zero, zero. So now we need to add some more code that's actually going to change these values so that we can actually get our character to move. So what we're going to do first is we're going to just save our script and come back to the Unity editor. I appreciate that this video has gone on for a lot longer than the previous videos, 
Um, I do intend to keep these videos as short as possible, keep them simple, but I kind of want to cover the basics of how this whole system talks to everything, talks to each other. So we've got our movement vector script already applied with the movement speed. I'm just going to drag my WASD vector movement to my game object as well. And as you can see, it's set there, nice, fat, dumb, and happy. And these two scripts will talk to each other, or rather this script will talk to this script. So the WASD vector movement script will talk to the movement vector script, and then the vector movement script will talk to the rigid body 2D, and it will give it some information. That's all that's happening. We're just making this as modular as we possibly can. And if I run my game at the moment, what you're going to see is not an awful lot's going to happen because we haven't given our WASD movement script any means of turning keyboard input into vectors and that's what we're going to do now. So the last thing that we need to do is we actually need to put in some if statements. If statements are just conditional statements that quite literally say if condition is true, do something. So I'm going to type in if and now our condition needs to be contained within some brackets and our condition is going to be input dot get key if we're pressing a certain key key code a key code for w so if we're pressing w and then we just want our move y to equal plus one we don't even have to put plus one we could just put one f to be honest now what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy that line of code and I'm going to paste it four more times. And now we can input our S, A, D. So S is going to be the opposite of W. So we've got up there. This one's going to be down. So we're going to set our Y movement to be minus one instead. Key code for A is going to be left. Now left is negative in the X axis direction. So we'll set that to minus one. And then D is going to be positive and we obviously need to make sure that we're referencing the movement x value for those last two like so there you go so now we've got a means of turning our movement x and movement y values into something else if we don't hold the keys down movement x and movement y will be set back to zero they're set to zero every single frame by default and then when we're holding the key down it will set our values to be one minus one whatever it wants to do so make sure you save your script come back to the unity editor and once it's compiled we should now be able to press the plus button the play button and if we type it, if we use WAS and D you can now see that our character will whiz around the screen at a fair old lick and if we turn that down let's say we give our movement speed 10 instead hit play again give it a moment to compile and now you can see that our movement is much more slow, much slower, much more sensible speed. It's a lot easier to control. Okay, so that basically covers everything that I wanted to cover in this video. We've talked about now how we can get scripts to talk to each other. Uh, so hopefully you found that useful. I would really encourage you to have an experiment, have a play. Use the code in this video by all means if you want to, but don't be afraid to kind of experiment with different things. Hope you find it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.